Hi, in this video, we're going to talk about top down design in Carol. So, in our programs, we use methods for a number of reasons to break down our program into smaller parts, to avoid repeated code, and to make our program more readable because there's other people who are going to be looking at your code. So, what top down design and decomposition is, is it's a strategy for taking a big problem and breaking it down into smaller parts that are easier to solve. So let's say you have a big problem and you don't know how to solve it. The first thing you do is go break that problem into a few smaller problems. And you take those smaller problems and you break them down into even smaller problems. And at this point, you have problems that are small enough that you can just go and solve those. But the idea is you go from the big problem down to smaller and smaller problems. That's top-down design. So say you were making a movie. That's a big task to go and make a movie. So you do first is you break that down into smaller problems writing the script, getting the cast and crew, filming the movie, editing the movie, and then you take those smaller problems and you break those into even smaller parts. Because for example, filming the movie, that's still a big part. So you say, let's break that down into filming scene one, and filming scene two, and filming scene three. That's the strategy behind top-down design and decomposition, taking a big problem and breaking it down into smaller parts. So let's go into our code editor and solve a problem with top-down design. Okay, so here we have a program called Hurdle Carol. And Carol's starting in the grid on the right. And what we want to do is get Carol to run a race. So to move to the hurdle, jump the hurdle, move to the next hurdle, jump the hurdle, and then run to the finish. So with top down design, what we want to do is we want to start with the big problem and break that down into a smaller problem. So in our run method, what we'll, what the first thing we want to do is run to hurdle. First we'll run to the hurdle, and then we'll say jump hurdle, and then we'll say run to hurdle, and then jump hurdle, and then run to finish. And the idea would be that if those methods already existed, then our program would be done. We start with the big problem and break them down into smaller parts. And what's nice here is that our run method reads like a story, it reads like English. And so if we were going to go and run that, we get an error because these methods aren't yet defined. So now let's go and define a method. Let's go define run to hurdle. So to run to a hurdle, what we do is we need to move three times. So let's try running that. Okay, we still have an error because jump hurdle isn't defined. So in the meantime, before we have all of our methods defined, we can ignore a few by commenting them out with two slashes at the start. So let's click run and we'll see now we can run to a hurdle. So the next thing we want to do is we want to teach Carol to jump a hurdle. So we'll say private void jump hurdle. And to jump a hurdle what we need to do is turn left and then move and then turn right. But wait a second, we don't yet have turn right defined. So at this point what we'll do is will actually teach Carol to turn right. If we were going to run this with our jump hurdle method, what would happen is oh, we get an error because Carol doesn't know how to turn right. So let's teach Carol to turn right. Private void turn right. And to turn right, what we do is we turn left three times. So now we're almost on our way. Let's see where we're at. We run to the hurdle, and then we go and jump the hurdle. Okay, but we haven't finished jump hurdle. So we say turn right, and then we need to move, and then turn right again, and then move, and then turn left. So let's see how that's working. So now we jump the hurdle. Okay, now we can use the run to hurdle and jump hurdle methods that we've already written. So let's reset and speed that up and see what that looks like. So we were able to reuse a method that we've already written. And now what we want to do is we want to run to finish. But that method doesn't exist, so we'll write it. So we'll say private void run to finish. And to run to the finish, what we need to do is we need to move four times. 
So now let's run our program and see what happens. All right, so there you can see it. We started in the run method with the high level names for the methods that we wanted to do. And then we went down and broke that problem into smaller problems and then wrote the individual methods. So that is an example of top-down design.